Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video, just running you through, investigating and fixing a fault on this 2018 Isuzu D-Max. Uh, it's a common issue on these. Basically the issue that we've got, obviously only the ignition's on at the minute, but the engine warning light's on. Um, the, it seems to be running okay. It doesn't seem to be affecting the performance, but we can clear the fault code. You can take it out, do about 10, 12 miles in it. But generally once you've turned it off, stopped it, and you come back to it and restart it again, the light comes back on. Now I'll just show you, we've plugged it in with a top down diagnostic machine. Now we've got one fault code at the minute stored in the engine ECU. I have had two fault codes in there, so the other code that hasn't come back at the minute, I'll just overlay that over the top of the video so you know what it is in case you've got that code as well. And you can just see at the minute there we've got P24C6 PM sensor temperature circuit basically relating to the particle matter sensor um, you can only get these genuine at the minute i've got genuine isuzu one ready to fit but i'll just run you through once we've got it on the ramp how to fit it and where it's located and just show you the sensor fortunately they are quite expensive they do seem to be quite a common issue on these but you can see the actual sensor just screws into the exhaust and then it has like this little sort of ecu section of it just with a little plug on there um, but if we just look at the data in the engine ECU just before we fit it as well. I'll put links to that uh, sensor where you can get one from in the description below if you want to check it out and I'll put the part number on there as well. Um, but if we go into the engine ECU and just have a quick look at the data. And just see, we have got some information about the particle matter temperature. And just see, we've got the particle matter sensor temperature. You can see at the minute, this has actually been sat for a few hours and it's reading 1200 degrees there. If we just strike it up, I'll just see if it makes any difference. just see with it running there it's still obviously it's clearly not that temp temperature in there at the minute it's been stood about three four hours so so all we're going to do now is just get it up on the ramp i'll just show you where the sensor's located just run your through fitting it and once we've got it fitted we'll clear the fault codes give it a good run and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault now, so just coming underneath the car from the front you can just see just to the back of this section there we've got the sensor there going to need a 24 mil spanner to undo it the wiring just comes down and you can see the ecu bit of it just bolts down to this little piece there so just a connector just to get off on that end so fairly straightforward to get off we'll just undo everything now get it swapped over So that's the old sensor out there, and you can just see it just gives a little bit of heat. I'll put a link in the description below to this because it's a pretty handy bit of kit just for grabbing a bit of heat quick. Um, but yeah, obviously not too bad to get out. All we're ready to do now is just swap it over, put the new one on. Once we've got it on, just run you through clearing the cows and just see if there's anything that we need to do. Sometimes you might need to go on the um, special functions and tell it it's had one fitted. Uh, but we'll run you through that once we've got it all swapped over.
And you can see the new one's all fitted now, ECU's all plugged in. We're just going to get back in the car, clear that fault code, and give it a run, let you know it's fixed the fault. Right, so it's all fitted now. I'd left this screen on the data, you can see at the minute it's actually reading quite high on there. It has been running for a while, the truck. Um, but it's at the minute it's reading 400 degrees, but I haven't cleared the fault codes or anything. So we'll just clear all the fault codes now and just see if there's anything that we need to run through and then we can give it a run. Right, so that's all the fault codes clear. We'll just check there's not any special functions. Right, so there's nothing on there specific to the particle matter sensor. So all we're going to do now, I'll just check that data quick now that we've cleared the fault code. So you're sort of dropping at the minute, 339 degrees on there now. So I'm just going to give it a quick road test now. But if we just strike it up, the engine light should be out now. Yeah, you can just see that's gone off. So just give it a decent road test. Once I've got it back, I'll just do another quick full scan and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault. Right, so we've just got back from a decent road test. You can see no engine light on there. It drove absolutely spot on, not Mr. Beat. Now I've actually just parked it up and just left it for a bit and come back to it as well. It's just with the fault code before, sometimes you could do 10, 12 miles and it wouldn't come on. But as soon as you'd parked it up and then come back to it, that's when the engine light was coming back on. So we can see nice and clear now. We've just done another full scan with the diagnostic machine. Uh, the engine ECU is nice and clear there, no faults in there. And then so it's basically just down to a faulty sensor. So unfortunately they're quite expensive i'll put a link to that part number and where you can um, get them from as well if you want to check it out but yeah if you've got that issue and it's not the wiring that's what you're going to need to be fitting to replace to fix the fault so but yeah hope the video helps someone in the same situation if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time